UKIP's leader in Wales, Nathan Gill, could be kicked out of the party for holding more than one position. The party's national executive committees voted to remove Mr Gill unless he resigns from one of his elected positions, either in the European Parliament or the uh, Senate, the Assembly. Yesterday evening, Mr Gill released an open letter strongly criticising the NEC for their decision. In the letter, he says he will... And I quote, not be coerced by the NEC into resigning positions to which I've been either elected by the people of Wales or appointed by the party leader. Well, let's speak to Nathan Gill now. He's in our Bangor studio. Good morning. Good morning, Ollie. You said you'd stand down as an MEP if you were elected as an Assembly member. You have been. So what's changed? Well, quite a few things, really. I always said all along I was going to stand down after the um, referendum. In the meantime... The two people on the list below me have both been elected to the Assembly themselves as well. <clears throat> so there is no um, replacement for me on the, the list system, which means that either we have a by-election, which will cost in the region of about £5 million to the Welsh taxpayer, and there's a good chance that we will not have a Brexiteer um, MEP representing the people of Wales, or we don't fill the position. Well, legally, the position must be filled. And what's going on right now is there is a very divisive factional element within the NEC and UKIP. There is eight people out of our membership of 44,000 people who are on the NEC. Nigel Farage himself yesterday did a, a piece in the Express and Breitbart absolutely slating the NEC and these people for the way that they are behaving and that how they have been so divisive and, and also a, fact, a factor in the reason why he himself chose to step down and leave UKIP because he just couldn't bear to deal with these people any longer. Right, lo lots to get through then, um, sure. there. And we'll come on in a moment to the, to the, to the process uh, and what might happen if you were to stand down as an MEP. But as far as others in the party are concerned, and I think it would be fair for those who elected you as an assembly member to be concerned, as some of them must be, is that you simply cannot do two jobs. You always said you wouldn't do two jobs. What makes you think that you can do two jobs? Well, the full nature of the MEP job has completely changed for a start. It is no longer the, the, the fact that the MEPs go there to create all of these laws that the British people will have to live under. That's all changed. We're leaving the EU. Uh, there's almost a West Lothian question there. How much and time do you spend doing that job then? Well, well, it will be starting again in September. Yeah. The Do we go there and do we vote on issues that no longer will affect the British people? Will you? I don't believe that we should be doing that. No, well, what will you do? And this is so the point. How will you divide your time? So we now have. I now have a, a team of people who are working there whose job it is to dig out what's going on with regards to the Brexit so that we can raise those issues and bring them back to the Welsh people and yeah. let them know but where I'm we are with Sorry, the Brexit I'm campaign. just interested in knowing how you think you might be able to divide your time. Well, the, the Welsh Assembly is a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when you're in Cardiff, okay? Yeah. And then the rest of the time, you spend the time either doing constituency work, dealing with emails and, and all those other issues, or go into functions and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So why is it that I cannot continue to do that? I mean, I've well, been you accused... Think you, you think you could do Monday to Wednesday in the Assembly and then a couple of days in Brussels? Yes, we've, we've got aeroplanes. It's dead easy to fly over right. and, and spend time there. Yeah, and but I've, then, but then and I've you, always worked my weekends yeah. as well, Ollie, and always. I know, I, well, I know you're and not... I, the but very I'm fact, I'm, you know, I, how many times have I come in on a I Sunday know, morning and... But the point is here... Listen, is the, Ollie, is let the, me just the, say, the point I've is been here accused of not being able to do both jobs by the leader of UKIP in the Assembly, and they're using an example of the fact I wasn't there on a day when I was doing a Brexit debate with you and Lord um, David, David Wigley, Wigley, David Wigley I in, remember it. in Wrexham. Now, the whole point of UKIP was for us to, to win the referendum, was it not? And yet, when I was doing referendum debates and, and events, I've had that used against me as an example of how I cannot do both jobs. It's absolutely pathetic. Okay. It's very divisive. It is not true. But the reality is, everybody knows I'm, I'm backing and running with Stephen Wolfe, and there has been a concerted effort by the NEC to block Stephen Wolfe for every single opportunity. I'll come on to they that as well in a moment because okay. I, we need to ask you some questions about that too. But let's let's get back to where, where you began and said that, that you must keep two jobs because it would be very, very difficult to replace you because you've got two AMs, uh, two people on the list already at AMs as well. 
and the cost of a by-election would be immense. You might not even win it, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But the second on the list, James Cole, he's back mm -hmm. in the party, and it seems that he's, he, he's ready to step in if, when you stand down. Well, I spoke to the new party chairman yesterday. As far as he's concerned, he would never allow James Cole to rejoin the party. This is the, this is the UK chairman or yes. the Welsh chairman? Because no, no, the Welsh the chairman's right behind him. Yeah, well, there we go. Uh, no, the, the UK chairman, the, the actual guy who runs the play, the, the, the thing right now, um, who is also interim as well, I should point out. Um, look, J James left the party, um, attacked the leadership of the party, Nigel Farage, etc., in the media, went and helped start a new political party to fight against UKIP in the last elections, the Welsh Assembly elections, took 44,000 votes that potentially we could have got, stopped us from getting at least one more and possibly three more AMs elected. Are you seriously saying that the, the party would then hand him an MEP position when, quite frankly, they weren't even, as far as they knew, going to allow him to rejoin the party? The party in Wales seemed to be moving in that direction. Yes, but the, not the party in Wales. Some of the people in the party in Wales. All right. Um, Okay, we're getting the picture here, and, and mm. this is a picture that we've uh, we've seen uh, we've seen emerging for some time. Um, UKIP is riven with divides, as, as, as riven as other parties are, it seems. And yes, yet unfortunately, there seems to be something in the water right now, doesn't yeah, there? Yeah. So, uh, are you getting to the point now where, like, like your great ally Nigel Farage, you might just decide you've had enough of all of this? Well, the irony is that we've been fighting for years for independence, and if the NEC gets its way next week, I will be independent, won't I? I mean, that's what, that's yeah, what the way you it's then? looking. Sorry? What will you do then? Will you fight it or will you walk away? Well, I, I have a duty to fight it. Um, Nigel called me yesterday to say, Nathan, don't give in to them. They're a bunch of you know what. And he also said, listen, in 1997, not many people know this, Nigel Farage was suspended and expelled from UKIP himself. Mm. But fighting it, what does that mean? Legal action? Uh, legal action, but also the reality is um, I've spoken to two of the, the main contenders for the leadership, and both of them have said, don't worry, Nathan, you know, one of us will get elected and you'll be back in the party as soon as we can get some sense to all of this. But the NEC's days are very numbered, and this is the reason why this is a last gasp attempt by them to stop the main perpetrator, the person who has mainly said that he's going to get rid of them and replace them, Stephen Wolfe, they are very desperate mm. to stop him. They've leaked illegally all kinds of information about him to the press as a way of trying to block him and stop him. Does that include the drink driving conviction? Absolutely. It is a, uh, a criminal offence to leak any information about... Well, uh, it's, it's also a criminal offence, isn't it? To, or it's an offence anyway to stand to be a police and crime commissioner without disclosing... Well, you can't do it if you've got a conviction, can you, as we found here in Wales with other candidates previously. I mean, Stephen Wolfe was in the wrong. Uh, absolutely, but that's between him, the party, and the Electoral Commission. The fact that the party or senior people within the party would leak its information shows you where we've got with all of this. It is a last, it, it's like an attempt at any cost to stop those same people within the party who want to change it and reform it and move it forward so, so we can actually pick up from what's going on in the Labour Party right now, which is absolute civil war, and the party is probably going to split. Well, there's no question of UKIP splitting. We will continue. Um, and as I say, on the 16th of September, we will, we will get a new leader. That new leader will be one of at least two people who I know very well. They've both contacted me. They will get rid of the NEC. The NEC's days are numbered. So it I think most people within the party accept that they are acting like a bunch of bullies. They're very crazy and th they're not fit for purpose. It sounds like you've accepted, though, that... that you won't be running alongside Stephen Wolfe for the leadership, that Stephen Wolfe is, is out of it now? No, not at all. No? I, I think you'll find that I'm out of it, that the party is going to um, remove the whip from me or whatever next week. Um, and as I say, I will just uh, basically step back for a while and support the, the decent leaders who, who want to run the party from the sidelines and then as what happened to Nigel in 1997, when he was expelled, he then came back stronger and with a little bit more wisdom. How can you do that? Though? This is what I don't... Uh, can you, uh, well, for ex uh, what, what's your relationship like with the, with the Assembly Group? Will you go to that meeting today at midday where they'll be talking about you? Will you be there? Um, no, I'm in Bangor. I'm not going to be able to get there by 12 o'clock. And quite frankly, I think it's a fait accompli what's been going on there. It was, yeah. was pre-planned 
with along with um, so how, Neil's how friends within the NEC uh -huh. a long time ago. How can you ever work with them again? How can you come back stronger? Well, well, th there are there are very strong, decent people within that group. I mean, the reality is, we, we in politics, you know, newsflash: we don't all get on. No party does everybody get on. No family does everybody get on. But if you're you're grown up and big about things, you're able to see. Well, these are our differences, but these are our commonality. This are the things that we agree with, and you move forward that way. We've got a huge task ahead of us. I mean, ultimately, next year, every seat in Wales will be up for grabs in the council elections. 2020 is our ultimate goal. If UKIP does not actually make a breakthrough in Westminster, then there is no point for UKIP. Thank and you very much. And that's the reality. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nathan Gill.